Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about the difference between a programmer and a software engineer and how you, if you already have learned to program and if you know how to code, can also develop into a software engineer and why you also should consider to be a software engineer rather than just a programmer. So let's start with what's the difference between a programmer and a software engineer. And for that, we obviously first need to look at what's actually a programmer. So a programmer, by my definition, is somebody that knows how to program, knows at least one programming language, and is able to write more or less complex programs on his own. I also differentiate here between a programmer and somebody that is good at copy and pasting. So if you learn programming, everybody is in this stadium where you don't really know what you're doing. You have maybe watched a couple of YouTube videos, maybe you've read a book and you're able to write basic code, but you are not really able to solve complex problems. So whenever you, you find a problem, first thing you do is you go to Stack Overflow, you go to Google, you search for a solution, you copy paste the solution, you change something in the solution. You don't really know what you're changing there, but you're trying to tweak it so that it's doing what it should do. It's, it's beginning to be close to a programmer, but it's not at the level of a programmer, right? A programmer really knows what he's doing, knows what he's changing. Of course, every programmer also goes to Stack Overflow or to Google and searches for solutions, right? Um, that, that, that's absolutely fine. Don't get me wrong here. But a programmer can understand the solution and then can make the tweaks, but knowingly what she or he is changing and not just trying to manipulate it so that by accident it's working. Okay, so if you have mastered this first stage, and this, this will take time, and uh, you also need this time to learn, but once you're able to do that, once you're able to write medium complexity programs, you are a programmer. And of course, you can now go the programmer route and develop more and more complex programs, really focusing just on coding, solving code problems, writing code. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is also the occupation, the job role of a software engineer. And a software engineer is slightly different than somebody that is, in quotes, just a programmer, uh, because he or she works like an engineer. Right? That's why it's a software engineer. So the question is, what's different between a programmer and a software engineer? And it has a lot to do with the word engineer. If you are a software engineer, you treat writing software like an engineering discipline. What does this mean, an engineering discipline? Well, an engineering discipline is something like electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, software engineering, and so on. And what all engineering disciplines have in common is they use well-defined technology, they use well-defined processes, the results are predictable, and process steps can be repeated with the same outcome. So if we now think about software, definitely that's also something we can do there, right? And that's exactly what the software engineering is doing. The, the definition of software engineering is that we are writing software like in an engineering discipline. We are focusing not only on coding, but on creating high quality software in a cost efficient way. Right? So it, it focuses on, on, on multiple things, right? on, on high quality and cost efficiency 
and being an engineering discipline, which means we have this repeatable process. Now, this does not mean that you have to use a V model process or that you have to use a waterfall process or any of the classical process models. Also, when you work in an agile way and um, embrace the agile manifesto, that's a method or a process that leads you to well-defined steps. You have your um, sprint planning, you have your planning poker, you have the dailies, if you use, for instance, Scrum, right? You have your well-defined sprints. So, so, so that's defined, that's the project management side of things. You have clear definition of done defined. You might use continuous integration, so you clearly have defined how integration of software is done. You probably have a high level of test automation and so on. So these are all already process implementation process steps that help you to engineer software. And then of course, what you will do as a software engineer is you will perform the four main activities of software engineering. And I already talked about those in another video that I will link up here, but just to summarize them, these are specification <coughs> of the software, so specifying the what the software will do, then design and implementation, so how the software will do the what, then doing testing and quality assurance to really ensure software is doing what was specified. And then in the end, evolution or maintenance of the software because software systems always change or the environment change and we need to do maintenance. We need to adapt systems. So if you are now a programmer, congratulations, you already mastered the first step, right? Now the next step is learn about how you can apply processes, how you can apply methods so that what you do is not just coincidence, that you follow a process whenever you create a new program, how you test things. And then if you work only on your own, right, you don't have to have a documented process. It's absolutely fine if you define for yourself what you want to do. I would either way encourage you to write down what are your steps when testing, what are your minimum requirements on how to specify software so that you have sort of a checklist for your own work and can also then later on when you have finished the project learn what was maybe not working as intended. Is there a step missing? Is there a step that needs to come earlier in your process and so on so that you get better and better and better over time? Also, maybe when you do quotation for a new project as a freelancer or when you do estimations, right? It's, um, it's also very good to write down how you came up with the estimation so that for the next project, if you compare it, how, what did I estimate? How long did it actually take me? Would I quote the same price again? Uh, would I quote maybe a higher price and so on, right? So this kind of writing down what you do to allow you continuous improvement is what you would want to do here. If, if you have learned programming at the university, but you have not yet had a focus on software engineering, that's also something that I would recommend because if you want to work in industry or as a solopreneur, whenever you want to work or earn your money with developing software, high quality software and cost efficiency will help you, right? When you have your own startup, if you are able to write high quality software and that in a cost efficient way, that helps you. If you are in a big Fortune 500 company, if you write high quality software and you are fast and cost efficient, 
that will help you doing the next steps there, right? So being a good software engineer and valuing these software engineering practices will help you either way if you want to work in the software industry. One other aspect that might differentiate a programmer from a software engineer is the level of documentation of the software. Quite often programmers or coders see code as the only artifact that is of value. But I would really ask you to think about isn't also the test cases that you have written for the code part of your work or the specifications, the considerations, the design that you have created, right? So um, can we say that the code is more important than our design? The idea that led to the code? No, not really. Can we say that the test cases that show that the code is working are less important than the actual code? Also not really, because we need to show that the code is working, right? And it's this holistic view about not only the code as the work product, but the overall documentation, testing, and so on that goes along with the code as the work product that also differentiates a programmer from a software engineer. And of course, if programming is your hobby and you just do it for having fun and you don't want to earn money with it, and you, you are not concerned about um, spending too much time solving problems over and over again, that's also perfectly fine, right? Not everybody needs to be a software engineer. If you want to earn money with programming, then I would really encourage you to learn more about software engineering. And of course, if you want to learn more about software engineering, then I would recommend you to subscribe to this channel because there will be more videos on software engineering in the future here on this channel. If you liked this video, then please subscribe and destroy the like button. And of course, if you have comments or questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And I see you in the next video.